European lending and American borrowing are very, very intimately connected and have been since 1790. Um, American uh, uh, borrowing depended, as I said, on a war taking place in Europe where you needed uh, some place to put your capital, and it turned out that the U.S. was a pretty good place uh, in 1791 and 1792. Um, uh, in the 1830s, that's, that's, it's all about cotton, um, and in the 1850s, it's all about Western land and mortgages. The um, process, then, of American borrowing European lending uh, is, is one in which basically um, there's a, what's called the Bank of England rate. It's published in every newspaper uh, starting in uh, 1793 in, uh, Europe, uh, in American papers. Um, and it says what the rate is for the Bank of England. Ba and the, basically the Bank of England sets the rate. It says what, what it is, what a 90-day bill of exchange will cost, what it will cost you to borrow money from the B Bank of England. Bank of England is the lender of the last resort. When the Bank of England raises its rates, the rates go up in the United States, only much quicker and much higher because effectively Americans are borrowing from Europe through all of these uh, downturns. And so what you see is, I have only got here from 1866 to 1876 just because I ran out of time typing. Um, but if we go from 1792 to um, 1890s, what we see is the Bank of England's rate and then the U.S. rates in almost every case being above it, right? And so um, this is when people say, when the Bank of England catches cold, uh, the U.S. gets the flu. What they're talking about in the 19th century is this, that when rates go up a little bit in the United States, they go up a lot in, uh, sorry, a little bit in Britain, they go up a lot in the United States. The only thing that's going to change this is the Federal Reserve, because the Federal Reserve is going to recenter lending in the U.S. Uh, rather than in Britain. 